So let's go ahead and get familiarized with the interface of Gaia. Gaia is a very modern UI compared to World Machine, and uh, I'm going to make a lot of comparisons between this and World Machine, but World Machine and Gaia are actually really completely different. Um, the only sense that they are kind of the same in is uh, the way you build out your landscape. But other than that, there's a lot of differences between Gaia and World Machine. I'm just using World Machine as a uh, comparison for those who are more familiar with it. But keep in mind that Gaia and World Machine are actually um, very different in many ways. So you, you have your preview up here like you do in World Machine, though it's a larger preview, it's 3D, it has lighting, uh, it looks really good. It's similar to World Machine in the fact that you, you, you can see what you're building as you're going along with your nodes, uh, but you have other options here other than just your basic 3D preview. Um, you can use uh, the different kinds of uh, profilers here. So you have the orbit, which is what we're in right now, and then you have the first person, which is really nice because it puts you in first person mode, kind of like a video game. You left click and drag and you can look around and then your WSAD keys move you around the terrain. This is really nice because you can get right down into your terrain where you, in some areas and see how it looks in different areas. And you can move all the way around the terrain, kind of like you're working in uh, Unity or Unreal Engine. It's really nice. If you right click, you can change the lighting. Uh, it doesn't change the sun position, which is very funny, but um, it changes the lighting and uh, you can make it more of a sunset or sunrise, more of a high noon, things like that. And that's just with right clicking. You don't have to do anything special. And you also have this orthographic view, which can be really nice if you need to see how it looks from the top down. Uh, right here, you have your uh, 2D viewport. This shows you what it looks like as your output file, which is really nice. Then you have your different options here to choose from, like your equalized option, your 3D option. Um, I just, I hate it when I do that, sorry. Uh, and then it just kind of fits, or you can change the ratio. Um, but zooming in, one to one. Anyways, uh, don't really have to do much here. Uh, I don't ever use this. It's helpful for diagnosing things, I suppose, or t having a look to see how things go. You have like a 3D view here and then you have your 2D view here, makes it really nice. Uh, but I don't ever use it. Uh, you can use whatever you like, obviously, but I'm just gonna stick with having this view right here. You can also change your lighting settings here inside of uh, your 2D view. And it just kinda changes the direction, all that fun stuff. Oh, you can choose the ports to output too, but we don't really have to worry about that. Um, now, um, how do I get rid of that? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, so my favorite is obviously the orbit view. Um, that's what I would be using most of the time. I feel like that's what a lot of people will be using a lot of the time. Um, and the first person view. Now across the top here, you have your materials presets. And you only have a few of them. And if you're familiar with like ZBrush or anything similar to that, these are just going to help you change the shading a little bit so you get slightly different looks in your material, things like that. Uh, and it tells you what it is. This one right here is probably just your base. This is roughness. And then right here, that's hyper lighting. That gives you some really cool looking lighting effects, better shadows, things like that. I just usually stick with this. Um, it helps you visualize things a little bit differently when you can flip through those and kind of get a different look. Then your atmosphere here, and this is really nice because uh, you can change the brightness. That one's pretty self-explanatory. I like changing this to 100% when I'm working, so I have a nice bright scene. And then I increase the ambient to about 85 to 90%, just so I can fill in the shadows a bit. And then your azimuth is just where your sun location will be. And then the altitude, and this will change it from like morning to night, essentially. Just like that. Super easy. Nothing much to do there. Uh, then you have your aerial perspective. And the aerial perspective is similar to what you would have in view, actually, where if you increase this, it makes your mountains look bigger and taller when they're further away. kind of increases the haze and water molecules and um, a lot of the dust particles and stuff in the air. But that only really changes in the first-person view. So if I were to go down here and 
let's get down to the ground and then oop, there we go and then change the aerial perspective here you can see how that's changing the aerial perspective and since we're using such a funky nighttime look it's not giving us a hazy look now now the sun is moving I think it was just frozen uh, but then we can increase this and decrease it and you can see what that's doing it just makes it look like it's further away in the background with some haze and whatnot it's really nice to help visualize things all right that's about all there is there and then you have your water level you can turn that on and the nice thing about the water level here in Gaia is that it actually moves you get some wavy looks it makes it look really nice you can increase the water level oops too much mm, might need to move there we go and that's our water level that's to help visualize your your uh, scene when you have like a beach or an island or something and it's not it won't export with the water level um, you'll have to create your own water level uh, inside of your 3d program but this one will just be Gaia only and it just helps you understand what your terrain looks like say if you had like a beach or an island similar to that um, you turn that off just with by unchecking it and there we go then you have your terrain definitions and this is like your height and your base and your scale of your terrain uh, you could increase these or decrease these depending on the, your need for your scene these defaults are actually pretty pretty standard um, and they're not you know they're nice to kind of stick with when you're just prototyping things and learning your nodes so that way you don't have to get too technical but when you finally understand what you want how high your terrain value should be at the max and how big it should be in scale this is a good place to start changing it so for instance if I wanted like a 500 meter sized terrain I just change this down to 500 meters a thousand meters right here or if you shift and hover over you get these micro increment options and these help change things when the sliders are being a little bit funky uh, we can just double that there we go and now we can increase this to 500 meters and there we go now I have my terrain as a uh, 500 meters and it's gonna make it look really tall that's because the uh, whoop, sometimes first-person view it's still being developed but sometimes I can do this funky thing just change the orbit and then go back to first person usually fixes it but we're just gonna stick with this so if I were to change this the uh, node vet parameters down here around I can get something a little bit better but uh, yeah you can you see what I'm saying just change these around to what you want and you're good We'll get into the build a little bit later um, and all of this stuff over here and all of this. This will cancel any of your running processes uh, if you have one that's kind of stopped or is taking a long time and you need to stop for some reason, you can cancel them there. Might not work with all nodes, by the way. And then right here is your suspend engine. You can enable or disable the engine and that will just suspend it here and it won't build these out until you unsuspend it. All right, so that is the top part of Gaia. Now along the left side right here, you have all your nodes and they're in nice little um, drop down menus that you can choose from. And what I actually like to do when I first get in is I like to extend this out. That way I have different, lo um, different levels here. So I have this side and this side. And that just helps free up some of the, uh, the long menu options here so I don't have to scroll as much and you can even do it more if you wanted you can increase it to three levels so on and so forth it's, I, I just like doing that that's a personal preference and then over here are your node parameters and these are really important when you start diving into nodes um, also one more thing in the orbit view left click pans around right click doesn't do anything middle mouse button will move around in the space here so if I wanted to look down I just use the left mouse button to look down I can use the middle mouse button to do this and then the scroll wheel zoom in, zooms in and out and that's how that works you can also use the WASD key that does the same thing as the middle mouse button but in smaller values so it takes a little bit longer to move around but you can fine-tune using the WASD keys alright so um, same thing down here in the node view uh, left click will and drag will select all nodes 
middle mouse button will drag around, pan around the nodes, zoom in and out with the screw or with the mouse wheel. And that's it. Super easy. All right. So if you select a node, you'll pre your parameters over here on the right side will change depending on the node. Every node has either similar or different functions, and there can be quite a few of them in some of the nodes. So we will dive into those a little bit later. Um, right now, let's continue going over some of these UI elements. Down here, you have your graph. You can change it to layers. It's going to ask you if you want to convert. I don't do that, but you can change on the fly here if you wanted. Um, this just tells you your workflow, graph or not, and then this will bring up the user console right here. We don't. I don't ever use a user console. Uh, I don't see a reason for me to use it right now, but I'm pretty sure you can do some kind of scripting languages in there, maybe some Lua scripts or something. I'm not sure what they support. Never really dived into it because I'm not really big into the whole scripting portion of it. Over here, you can fit all of your nodes with the auto fit. And this will just fit your nodes into your view. Right here, you'll be able to um, pop out another window and you can drag around like this inside of it and you can kind of see what's going on. This is kind of similar to what you get in Unreal Engine. Uh, and then you can zoom in and out on this too kind of help you place where you're trying to find things especially when you have big workflows and say you have like something way up here but then you have to go way down here really quick instead of just doing this whole thing you just pop this open and just drag it and you can see everything just by doing the zooming in and out right there all right so let's go ahead and close that let's auto fit it again this right here will force a refresh and that'll refresh everything <clears throat> all your nodes will refresh and that comes in handy if a node is stuck which can happen sometimes you have your mutate nodes um, and mutations are nice because these will change the seeds of all your nodes Boop. there we go and now we have a different terrain so say you have something you like and you just need to export multiple terrains um, but you don't want to change your nodes around to do it all you do is you randomize the seeds and you can get something different every time you randomize them. It's really nice. Then you just have a menu here that lets you choose between a lot of stuff here. Show 2D view, show high grid, snap to grid, take screenshot of the viewport, you can take screenshot of the graph, you can take a screenshot of both the viewport and the graph together. And that makes it really nice when you are trying to help another person troubleshoot like in the, uh, the forums or the Facebook page or something like that. And, you, and they say, how can I do this? And then you throw it together and you show them how they can do it. You just take a screenshot and send it to them. You don't have to use any uh, built-in or any other third-party pro program. You can just do it right inside of here. Makes it really nice. Over here, you have some build options. Um, these will, we'll get into a, a lot of these a little bit later. Uh, but right now, we're not going to really do much with them. You need to have a node selected to do most of them anyways. But I think that will cover... The very basics of the UI inside of uh, Gaia. You also have your new, if you want to create a new one, open and save. Right here you can save incremental and that makes it really nice if you need to kind of save your work as you go um, and have different save outputs. Makes it really nice. Uh, but that is uh, about it for this one. So I will uh, start diving into creating our first little node setup. So I'm going to delete this at the beginning, these kind of um, default about nodes. And we're just going to go over these one at a time in the primitives section. So the next video will be uh, Gaia primitives, and uh, we'll, we'll start from there. Thanks.